new cells, multi-lineage stress enduring stem cells. These are a new type of stem cell, at least for treatment wise. They've been around since about 2010 and they were discovered by Dr. Desawa. So in this video, you're gonna see an interview with me and Dr. Desawa going through different questions about new cells, how they work, how they're compared to mesenchymal stem cells, which are the treatments we've been doing for the past eight years. And mu cells are actually found in uh, mesenchymal stem cell cultures. So what they did is they found out by stressing the cells enough until they die, the mesenchymal stem cells, you're left with mu cells. And these cells are a true pluripotent stem cell, meaning they can turn into any of the cells from the three different germ layers. So pretty much any cell in your body they can turn into. And they're smart like mesenchymal stem cells. They go to inflamed or damaged areas. They then act like a macrophage, start eating the tissue, and then they turn into the cells of that area to help fix the problem. So they're really incredible. Um, we're now working with her direct and offering her Dasawa Mu cells to the public. You can see them at our website, www.dbcmucells.com. Here's the interview with me and Dr. Dasawa. Hello, this is Josh with Dream Body Clinic, and I am here with Professor Desawa. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Japan and here in Puerto Vallarta. And you just did an awesome presentation explaining how the Mu cells work, and you are the founder of Mu cells, correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's, it's so incredible. You were going through everything. So I guess what you were saying, like, I guess we already do mesenchymal stem cell mm -hmm. treatments, mm -hmm. and you discovered these actually working with mesenchymal stem cells, right? Yes. So you found these and you're just finding these uh, have so many different options, ways to help because they're pluripotent, correct? Yes. That's yes. great. So with the pluripotency, you were telling me that these are pretty awesome because what they'll go through the system, they'll find the issue. And then how did you describe like how they function when they get there? Cause it was, it was pretty interesting. Okay, so mu cells are contained in mesenchymal stem cells and fibroblasts as one to several percent of the total population. But when you separate the one percent mu cells versus remainder of the cells, 99 percent of non mu cells, their behavior are so different because the mu cells are pluripotent. They capture the dead cells and then they or damaged cells, and they differentiate into the same cell type. But because mu cells are pluripotent, like they can differentiate into various kinds of cells in your body. However, non-muse MSCs, remainder of the cells, they only have potential to differentiate into chondrocytes, bones, and adipocytes, yeah. and their differentiation direction is quite limited, not pluripotent. And the secondly, when they were infused intravenously, the mesenchymal stem cells, I mean, the non muse emesis, are largely, mostly they are trapped in a lung. But mu cell pass the lung capillary, they migrate to the damaged tissue because they have a very sharp sensing system receptors to sense the sphingosine monophosphate that is produced uh, by any of the damaged tissues. So they can migrate to the brain in stroke, heart, in my myocardial infarction or kidney or whatever, very sharply. And then lastly, the mesenchymal stem cells do not remain in the body over three weeks. They will disappear by two or three weeks. But mu cells, once they integrate as a differentiated cells and then incorporated in the tissue, they will remain over six or seven years. That was, that was clarified in the many clinical trials that were you know, done in Japan. So, you know, the bystander effect delivered by the non muse MSCs are very limited. They were trapped in the lung, they produced the factors in the lung, and they would disappear, right, within a couple uh, several weeks. So uh, the good effect will be just temporal. But the mu cells not only replace the damaged cells with functioning healthy cells, but they also produce the good effect like in MSCs. So those bystander effects produced by mu cells are more long, more, you know, long lasting. That's, That's amazing. A, yeah, very quite different. And I love the way you explained it. You said, okay, let's say my heart's damaged, right? So these mu cells are gonna go in. The IV seems to be the best way for most treatments, yes. what we described. 
And they're going to get there and they're going to see these damaged cells and they act like a macrophage. Yes. Which if you're not familiar with the macrophage, it's like a specialized immune cell. It cleans stuff up, right? And in and you watch it, it looks like it's eating it, right? And so yeah. these mu cells, like we were joking before we had some food, that they're they're hungry. They want to eat this damaged. Yeah, they're really cells. great eater. <laughs> yeah. And then because they ate that for whatever reason, they can understand what kind of cell it was. And then they'll differentiate into that to replace where was damaged cells. So they do too. They clean it up, which is huge, and then they replace it. Yes. So you could have this bad heart, which you saw with the studies with uh, heart attacks, right? Mm, that yes. It started bringing back bad mm. tissue. So mm. it's so incredible to see. And you mentioned a few things. The one I found really interesting, two of them, was the back. You found it with discs. It would go through. And even with like, you know, herniated discs and such, it would get there and regenerate the disc. I mean, that's so cool. And then bigger, kind of close to my heart, my dad had ALS and you were showing these you know, these mice models where you administer just with an IV and, you know, they've, they've got this little wheel they're hanging on and the rat they, or the mouse that they gave the, the muse cells to, it hung out on the longest. So it clearly had a, a big effect there. So we know they're getting to the brain. I mean, it's just, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. And so the only other thing, I guess it's a big question that I get a lot, and this is more with the MSCs, but it applies here too, is the risk of rejection. Mm -hmm. So we know with the MSCs, it's the, you know, they're not really exhibiting the HLA, but the, the mu cells seem to be doing even more from what you were saying, yes. correct? Yes. Well, we have seven clinical trials, uh, myocardial infarction, stroke, or the cervical spinal cord injury, or, you know, the many kinds of. So all the patients receive the uh, donor, the mu cells that are HLA mismatch. Yeah. And that can be directly infused intravenously without immunosuppression either. So uh, the mu cells do not select the donors. They do not ask or require immunosuppression treatment. Um, this is quite different from uh, the characters seen in MSCs because the mu cells have a special or particular mechanism to induce immune tolerance yeah. plus immunosuppression. So MSCs, mesenchymal stem cells, they're known to have immunosuppressive effect. They immunomodulate by producing many factors like IDOS or TGF beta or prostaglandin E2. Mu cells also produce that. Yeah. So that will be working in acute phase after intravenous injection. That's why MSCs will remain in the body for several weeks. Yeah. But after then they will reject it. This is, you know, those factors will be just temporarily working, but mu cells have uh, several options to escape from immunological rejections. The one is the same as MSC. At the very acute phase after intravenous injection, they will escape from the immunological attack by producing those factors, immunosuppression factors. But later on, they switch. They affect and, um, how to say, modify the lymph node and the immunological system to t make them tolerant mm. or do not attack the mu cells only. Yeah. So mu cells have some privilege <laughs> to escape from immunological attack. So that is the reason why even after seven years of the uh, clinical trial, the patient did not show any of the sign of the immune rejections. That's awesome. Yes. And so, so this is new tissue that's not getting attacked. It's it's fixed whatever issue it's going to. Kind of a chimera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The donor <laughs> muse and your own cells and yeah. That people don't have to worry about that, right? Because that's like I was telling you earlier, people have this weird concept that, oh, there's DNA transfer, but the DNA is in the nucleus. We're not transferring yes. DNA. We're just replacing some tissue or cells to, to help with what's damaged, right? Yes. Yes. Great. And then the other thing is, I mean, because you said seven years you know, and we saw no rejection. That's just the data we have, right? Like that could be longer. We're not sure. But the other thing I'd read, and I didn't get to ask you this earlier, but I've also heard the non-tumorigenic factor. There's no, been no, no cancer, no, no tumors, cancer. no, because yeah. that's a big, you know, fear of people. This is going to turn into, because, yeah. you know, that was the big fear back when originally with the pluripotent stem cells from the, um, uh, you know, aborted fetuses mm -hmm. is they had a high chance of teratomas and mm -hmm. such, but mm -hmm. nothing with this, right? Because mu cells are endogenous. They were circulating our body, right? Yeah. So um, 
the uh, developmental origin of mule cells are still in debate, but they're there from the very beginning of development, human development, but not only confined to human, but also yeah. the ma mammals. And then, um, you know, they're usually doing the minute repair to maintain the tissue homeostasis. Like, uh, as you explained, um, they circulate, they find out the damaged cell or dying cells in microscopic level, they go there and then they eat and capture and they replace. And they're doing this every day in every aquarium. Yeah. So what we do for the treatment is that we just collect the mule cells and then supply, that's it. No gene introduction, no manipulation. The mule cells are already there. You, you have your own mule cells. Yeah. I have my own mule cells. That's the reason why. The secondly, not only repairing the tissue, but they have a high activity to repair themselves. Mm. For example, different from MSCs, mule cells have a very high enzymatic activity to repair damaged DNA. So this was published by the European group that when MSCs and mule cells were irradiated with X-ray or UV or mm. genotoxic substances, the DNA will be cut or damaged. Yeah. There will be single damage or double strand damage or whatever. But mule cell finish repairing the DNA damage within six hours. Wow. But MSC require more than 48 hours. So, so we now know that not only they repair the tissues, but they have high activity to repair themselves. Oh, so this nice. is one of the reasons why mule cells are very, you know, resistant against becoming tumors. So yeah. Even if they were damaged, you know, they they have original missions to repair the tissues, and the damaged tissues are originally very highly stressed and the very you know harsh environment with low pH or toxic substances or something like that. They need to repair. So they are stress resistance. This is re partly the reason why mule cells are quite, you know, resistant against any kind of distresses, I including like genus of things. <laughs> oh, interesting. And then you were telling me too, dosing wise, you're typically, at least for the studies, are doing more around like 15 million for yeah. most of the treatments, IV. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. So it's just good to know like that, you know, we want to know how they work, what they do. And you've done, that's amazing to be able to explain it like that. Thank you so much. And yeah, we're, uh, we're looking forward to help a lot of people with this. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Josh from Dream Body Clinic. And if you want to get a hold of us, you can go to www.dreambody.clinic. Scroll down, you'll find everything there on the homepage or call us toll free at 888-704-3977. Happy to help.